So, <clears throat> my name is Dan Smith. I work at Red Hat. Uh, I'm Valmir Moreira. I work at CERN. And we're going to talk about scaling Nova with Cells v2. So, I'll start out with some, uh, a couple of slides from my Boston Cells presentation just to kind of level set architecture. Um, historically, in Nova, this is kind of what your deployment looks like. You've got uh, some API nodes there on the left. Uh, which your users interact with. You've got a whole pile of compute nodes on the right, and they intersect at the database and the message queue. And depending on how large your deployment is, the database and the message queue become single point of failure and a point of contention for uh, APIs accessing the database as well as talking to the compute nodes. So, uh, in the past, Nova has helped to solve this with something we called cells, which we now call cells v1. And this worked by, uh, you, you still had your API nodes, um, and you still had a bunch of compute nodes, but we would shard those compute nodes into groups. And we would uh, attach them to a database and a message queue that was really just for that, that chunk of computes. Um, reducing the uh, amount of work and data that each one of those had to store. Um, but because it was kind of a bolt-on to regular Nova, uh, we still had to have this unified database uh, that we put in front of the APIs. And the API nodes don't really know about this sharding, and so they, they need to look at a unified database. So we had this um, component, which was called the Nova Cells service, that basically um, looked at all of these fragmented databases and composed the, the view, the unified view, um, into the, the top-level database that the API could then use to expose to users. And the whole point of this was to provide a single pane of glass, a single appearance of a single deployment in front of basically uh, chunked up pieces of Nova. And so the problem here um, was that, there are several problems, but uh, one is that um, this, this router, this extra little piece, basically had to implement every single feature that, that we had in Nova. It did it with separate code and a separate code path. And so Obviously, uh, we started with some delta of features that uh, weren't supported by this separate router, and over time, that only grew, because people would implement a feature for Nova, but they wouldn't implement it for Nova cells as well, um, since it had to be completely separate, and, and so that gap just kept growing. Um, the other problem here is that this proved to be quite lossy. Um, it required a lot of um, manual human care and feeding to keep this running, to keep the databases synchronized, to fix up issues when it didn't synchronize something it was supposed to, as well as to hand synchronize things that it just assumed that you were gonna synchronize for it. So we moved to this um, newer desired architecture, which we now call Cells v2, which was um, similar. We keep the, keep the API nodes um, we keep the compute nodes segregated the way we want them, but instead of um, kind of building this glue to lie to the um, API nodes that, that were just looking at one Nova, we decided we would teach the API nodes about the sharding so that they natively could look at each of those databases and know that it wasn't just one database um, being glued together by this lossy cell service. So in V2, um, this is kind of what your, your services look like. Um, you've got a, a top layer of services, your control services. Um, you've got your API nodes, your scheduler. It talks to placement. Those services all have kind of a global view of the whole deployment, and they know how to talk to the pieces. There's still a database at the top, but it's not the database that, that we had in V1. So it's not a um, aggregated view of everything, all of the data in the, in the deployment all squashed into one thing. It's really just um, data that is global to the, database, to the deployment, so flavors and things like that, um, as well as some mapping information to know where an instance was, whether it was in this cell or that cell. 
And then down below, you've got what we now call the cells, which used to just be the Nova database. Um, and here you've got compute services, obviously, because the whole point is to shard this out. You've got um, some conductors down here as well to do uh, some of the task offloading for these things. And then you've got the main database and the main message queue for all of these compute nodes. The, this is where the instances live, and um, the API knows how to talk down to, to each of these. So design and development tenants for V1, uh, having come from, for V2, having come from V1, we had kind of some things that we wanted to, to accomplish with V2. Um, so one, probably the most important one, is that V2 should not be a, an opt-in different code path. You shouldn't have a Nova deployment that, that either is cells or isn't cells and runs different code depending. Uh, that's a, the whole point of, of redoing it, really. Um, full upstream testing, uh, which we definitely did not have with V1. We had some testing eventually, um, but it was, it was extremely minor. And uh, obviously moving to this unified way of doing things means that we could get this, um, this upstream testing. Um, and uh, we wanted to not have cells be visible to API users, meaning the whole point of this was to provide a unified single pane of glass in front of a Nova deployment. We didn't want to like push the burden onto the users to need to know that, um, that all of these pieces were separate. Um, we wanted to get rid of the, that replicating service. So a big problem with that was either not replicating data in both places or, or replicating it and keeping it in sync. Um, so the point here was to decide for each piece of data that Nova keeps track of, does, is that a global thing or does that live in the cells? Um, and of course, aim for no only supported without cells kind of features. So we, I said the feature gap with V1 was large. It grew over time. We also had some features that technically worked in V1 but behaved differently, weren't atomic if you were in V1. Uh, user obviously has no visibility into that, so we're trying to avoid having any of those kind of things that behave differently. Um, obviously, the point here is for performance to scale Nova, so we wanted to optimize this cross-cell um, type of behavior, um, specifically instance operations were the most important ones because that's what users are doing and um, that, that needed to remain efficient. Um, and we said that we would introduce caching and fault tolerance and kind of additional things on top of that to, to solve hotspots and, and performance issues when we got there. Try to not pre-optimize but um, let people deploy it in their, their uh, environment and find what the issues were and we would take care of it when, that, when we got to that point. So obviously um, this is a huge challenge. Um, the goal here was, was that we had two camps of users that, we, that were running Nova in different pieces of Nova and, and we were trying to get them all onto a unified set of code, a unified architecture. Um, we had people for which cells v1 was never going to be a thing. It was too complex. The feature delta was a problem. Um, they didn't have the manpower to, to do all of the hand care and feeding and constantly patching things up. And on the other side, we had people for which cells v1 was necessary. They needed it for the scale. They were willing to not have some of the features. They, they were willing to dedicate staff to kind of keep it running. And so... Obviously, it's a challenge to get those two very conflicting ways of doing things on a single set of code, and we had to be able to provide a, a transition for those people, so nobody was going to throw their deployment away and move to a completely different way of doing things, so we had to um, come up with a way to get regular operators operating in this kind of mode, but without additional runtime um, requirements for, for extra things they have to do, and obviously we had cells v1 operators that were, that had huge deployments and they were willing to, to put up the, the um, lay out the staff to keep things running or, or whatever, and, and, but they've built this big deployment and they just can't obviously throw it away. 
Um, so that was obviously a challenge, but even still with refactoring all of these internals of Nova to get to this point, um, we had to do this like over the course of many years, but without just freezing Nova. So lots of other things were happening inside Nova while this was going on. When we started this, API micro versions weren't even a thing. Um, placement wasn't a thing. And these are all other big things that have happened in Nova in parallel to all of this refactoring, which was a huge challenge to not have it all fall on the floor, but also provide a path for people to get from pre cells 2 to cells v2 without having to throw anything away. And of course, the world changed underneath us while we were doing this. We started this with a kind of very um, conventional rack space, you know, initiated way of thinking of, you know, a public cloud region was a huge deployment in a data center, and you know, the, the cells split was really just for for scale, and, and you know, now we've got people talking about deploying 70 clouds across, sorry, I'm gonna give away the, but lots of people, lots of cells, geographically distributed, that wasn't a thing that we really were thinking about, um, and all this edge stuff, right, with people talking about very small deployments, but across a WAN link and things like that. So all, all of this was going on in the background while we were trying to affect this change. So, how'd it go? Um, I think mostly good. Um, <laughs> we introduced uh, bugs and code churn, obviously, because this was such a major undertaking. Um, I think we made it through most of that stuff. We, we came up with solutions for all the things that we found. Um, we, we had some maybe rocky, not rocky, capital R, but um, some bumpy releases where um, things happened and people deployed and you know we realized that there were things that needed to be accounted for. But overall, you know, I think we've made it through the, the really difficult bit. Um, regular operators have a little bit more that they have to do, mostly in the setup phase, but not really um, you know, operationally, which was the goal. Um, existing cells v1 users had a, a big transition, right? They have huge deployments, lots of cells, lots of data, and um, it obviously is a lot of work to, to reshape the cloud um, on top of this new architecture. Um, we, we had a lot of challenges where people built the cloud on cells v1 and kind of digested some of the quirks of that architecture into the expectations or the way they handle things. And obviously v2 was a very different architecture with things living in different places. And so there was definitely some bumps in the road there, but um, I think we made it through. Um, I, I think another really good thing that came out of this was um, some of the cleanups and stricter rules about w where we put data in Nova and how we classify it and how we talk to it and when we talk about it. Um, I, I think that um, in addition to being able to do this split for scale, I think there's some non-scale um, things like federated Nova that we, we've kind of classified these bits of data and put them into into buckets, which means that we can talk about them a little bit more um, abstractly, which I think was an unintended but good side effect that, that came out of this. So Status and Rocky, um, fully developed, um, tested in mainstream Nova. There's no, anybody that's running a, a recent release is running cells, whether you like it or not. You might have only one, um, but that was the goal, was to get everybody there, and we made it. Um, we have pretty good multi-cell performance. We've spent a lot of time um, optimizing those instance operations, like I said, that are very important for um, kind of the front line of what your users are gonna hit. Um, we still have some admin type operations that are a little bit more naive, but those are within the control of the operator, so hopefully a little bit um, less important and, and uh, on the road to being fixed. Um, we have a few remaining functions that still don't quite work exactly perfectly in cells v2. It's an extremely small um, subset. There's workarounds for most of, most of them. Um, and we, we're kind of um, punting a little bit to solve those in the right way instead of um, trying to 
come up with a kludgy way of, of resolving those. Um, like I said, performance um, is pretty good now. It's been rapidly improving over the last several cycles. Um, um, each of the last like three cycles, people have done serious performance testing and um, come with numbers, hotspots, and we've addressed uh, a lot of those, which is cool. Fault tolerance is um, still naive, uh, but there's a lot of work going on in Rocky to, to make that a lot better. So what's next? Um, Cross-cell migrations was never a thing that V1 was really ever going to have on its radar, but it's a, a possibility in V2, um, which is cool. So this is further eliminating any sort of artificial restrictions that exist with you having your deployment split up like this, which is cool. Uh, like I said, fault tolerance improvements, um, handling uh, a down cell and the API still being able to provide as much data as possible, as well as some um, issues around... Um, quotas and making sure that that calculation happens properly when cells are down. Um, but plenty of room here still to kind of make incremental improvement for performance and fault tolerance. And one of the things that's nice about this new architecture is that the scheduler and placement have a global view of all of the hosts. And um, so while that presents a little bit of a scaling problem, it presents a nice ability to be able to do smarter placement and things like affinity uh, guarantees in placement with a high level view of the cloud, which is cool. Okay. So thanks. So hello. So what I'm gonna do is to talk about our experience running Cells V2 during the last six months. Um, but first a little bit of context uh, about what CERN is and what we do. CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Um, the main goal of CERN uh, is to do fundamental research, especially in the particle physics field. If you are wondering what is this picture, so this is the Large Hadron Collider, uh, LHC. Uh, it's uh, the biggest particle accelerator in the world. Uh, it's a ring with 27 kilometers. All of this is 100 meters underground. It crosses two, uh, two borders uh, in the France and Switzerland. And this big blue pipe that you are seeing there um, is basically a huge magnet, a superconducting magnet. And to operate, it needs to be cooled down to minus 271 degrees Celsius. So a lot of liquid, liquid helium to cool this down. And inside, there are two smaller pipes. That is where the beams of particles travel, and they are accelerated to very close to the speed of light. These beams travel in opposite directions, and they, then they collide inside huge detectors that are also 100 meters in the ground. And when they collide, you can see the, all the bunch of particles. Uh, what these detectors do is basically taking pictures. They are big digital cameras, but they take 40 million pictures per second. This produces up to one petabyte of raw data every second. Of course, you cannot store all of that. So they are filtering, and what we store is just a few gigabytes per second. And then all this data needs to be analyzed, and, is, and most of them is uh, analyzed in our CERN clouds that runs on top of OpenStack. So this is one dashboard that gives you an overview about the size of our clouds. So we have around 3,500 users more than 4,000 projects, around 36,000 virtual machines running, um, more than 9,000 uh, 9, nodes, hypervisors, plus more than 1,000 bare metal nodes for Ironic. Uh, in terms of cores, uh, we have around uh, 300,000 cores. If you saw previous presentations uh, from CERN, uh, the number of available cores actually uh, went down. This is not because we removed capacity nodes from the cloud. It was because the recent issues, uh, like L1TF, that we needed to disable SMT in a bigger part of our clouds. So that's why we see this decrease of number of cores, and you see this overcommit in the cores used, just for you to know. So, cells at CERN. Um, 
We are running sales basically from the beginning of the CERN clouds since 2013. Um, so why we need cells? Why we are using cells? Uh, there are several points. Uh, first, we wanted to have only one endpoint that we offer to our users. We have two data centers, one that is in Geneva, Switzerland, the other that is in Budapest, Hungary. And we did, at that point, we didn't want to have two different regions or even two different endpoints to offer this to our users. We wanted this to be completely transparent. So, and cells are actually allow us this. So we started with only two cells, one in the data center in Geneva, the other in Budapest. Availability, resilience. So if you have cells, basically what it allows you to do is to split your infrastructure, partitioning your infrastructure in small sets of nodes. Uh, and this allows you to scale your node infrastructure. Uh, in our case, each cell has around 200 nodes. We have a lot of them. We have, at this point, 73 cells. And basically, they can act as failure domains. So because a cell is more or less isolated, you have the compute nodes, you have the control plane, and if that control plane fails, uh, only a small part of your infrastructure is affected. Uh, and depends what kind of workloads is there, could be uh, high priority or not for you to actually to intervene. Um, one nice feature that uh, with cells, in this case I'm talking about cells v1, this was 2013, is that we could dedicate workloads, projects, to specific cells. Um, so we have different hardware types, uh, hardware is bought for different projects, so we could actually dedicate cell Nova to, move, to create all the instances from this project in that particular cell. And we, we also separate hardware types per cells uh, because it's easy to organize, deprecate hardware. And it's all actually very easy then to introduce and evaluate new configurations in Nova because almost cells are more or less isolated. Means that if we, we want to introduce a new configuration option and test it at scale, we don't deploy this in the entire cloud. We do this per cell. So we introduce the new configurations in few cells, evaluate, scale, uh, how it performs, and then we can roll out this to more cells, eventually to all the cloud. So a lot of advantages, but a lot of disadvantages as well. Uh, uh, it was an operational nightmare, as I call it here. The main reason is uh, it was not really maintained upstream. Uh, why? Not a, lot, not a lot of deployments were using cells. Only, I only knew a few of them. Uh, only big clouds were using cells. Uh, also, there were a lot of functionality uh, that was missing. Uh, simple things like aggregate support, uh, server groups, security groups if you're running Nova Network. All of that was not available um, if you're using cells v1. So what these deployments that we're using cells started to do was to do patches, basically, to have this functionality. And we start having different patches to solve the different problem. This was actually very hard then to move this code upstream because the lack of testings for cells at that time. Um, so we end up solving the same problem in different ways and adding the specifics of each deployment. So, as you can imagine, upgrade in this situation, it was very, very challenging because you needed to make sure that all your patches will work in the next uh, Nova version that was not done considering that. Um, other uh, architectural aspect of the cells v1 was that DBs were synced. There was a top cell DB and then all the Nova cells, DBs, and they were synced. And sometimes that failed um, and DBs were out of sync. So our journey to cells v2, uh, we started in 2013, only two cells at the time, few hundred nodes in the G release. We upgraded in all releases between Grizzly to Newton and 
at Newton, we start thinking what we need really to upgrade to Cells V2. Uh, Pike was the first release that allowed multi-cell deployment with Cells V2. So at that time, we did a lot of work to upgrade to Akata, and then after a few weeks, we upgrade to Queens with the Cells V2. We did the upgrade and the migration at the same time. Uh, at that time, this was April this year, um, we had 70 cells, uh, the, more or less the nodes that we have today. This was very challenging. If you want to know more about how we did this upgrade and this migration, uh, I did a talk last summit describing this. But what this is about today is Cells V2 and our experience uh, with it. So why we are so excited about Cells V2? First of all, we start using all the code from upstream. We reduced a lot the number of patches that we, that we have for very uh, simple functionality. To have flavors, for example, that was not available on Cells V1. All the Nova deployments now use Cells. I think it was started in Newton. Every deployment uh, needed to move to cells. So almost everyone now is using cells. We are not in the black hole anymore. And this joke is not because we are at CERN. <laughs> um, finally, we have the full feature set that we can use. We have the promise of same DBs because there is no synchronization anymore between the top and cell DBs. Actually, this concept doesn't exist anymore. And uh, Actually, you could now, with Cells V2, do rolling upgrades that in the past, with Cells V1, was not possible. Basically, we needed to shut down the entire cloud, do the upgrade, and then pray a little bit and turn everything on and see if it was working. So, we are so excited with Cells V2, all these advantages, um, that we move, if you notice, we move very fast to Cells V2. Um, of course, we knew that being one of the first, I think we were one of the biggest clouds moving to Cells V2, we probably will find some issues doing this, but we were willing to take this risk and actually help in community and work on them. Um, of course, as you can guess, we identified a few issues at scale that basically uh, only if you are running thousands of nodes and uh, several a large number of cells, you will notice this. But because of the work of our Nova team, uh, this was the bug, then most of it is already fixed in Rocky, and most of them are also backported to Queens. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is to show some issues that we discover uh, in our cloud after the migration to Cells V2. I have these dramatic titles, but it's just to grab your attention. So, Hot databases. You can see those flames. So what this is about. Uh, in cells v1, we had this top cell database. And all the Nova API calls uh, were basically querying that database. Meaning that all the Nova databases for the cells, each cell as, uh, as one database, were not doing much. Basically very, very little. It was basically the, only the synchronization. So, in our deployments and all Cells V1 deployments, we had a very performant DB, uh, top level DB, basically to observe all the requests, all the queries from the APIs. Um, we were aware that the pattern with Cells V1 changed. So now with Cells, uh, with cells V2, when you do a Nova list or a Nova boot, what happens is the APIs need to go through all the Nova databases in the cells. Even if we were aware of this, we overestimate the impact at scale. Um, so what happened is when we upgrade to or migrated to Cells V2, we saw a huge increase of load in the, our cells DBs, and they were not coping well with this. Um, so simple operations, if you are using Cells V2 like Nova List, the request goes to all the cells DBs, and if you have a lot of them, actually it needs to query, do a lot of queries. And at the beginning, in Queens, these operations were sequential. So you start adding time and time. This was also taking some time to the request to finish. 
Uh, all of this actually it's already fixed in Rocky. I don't remember if it was backported to, to Queens. Um, these graphs that I have there, um, this one is the most interesting one. This is the, some metrics from one of our cells database. And this one represents the number of connections. And this is when we migrated from cells v1 to cells v2. That one is before the upgrade. And you can see when we enabled the APIs to only a few users. So basically, initially, it was not doing nothing. And that, then the number of connections increased uh, enormously. But we are not expecting this. We knew that this will increase, but uh, this much uh, we weren't aware. So basically, we needed to change our database configuration, our, how we set up our databases to support of this. Um, so be aware if you are moving to cells v2. Most of this actually it's fixed in Rocky because now Nova, uh, instead of going through all the cells, uh, only selects the cells where you where your project has instances. So it's, it's much, it's, it's improved a lot. Another dramatic title, DB down, cloud down. So what this is about. Um, so basically this is more or less the, the previous issue. So if you do a simple operation like Nova list, Nova goes through the cells DBs to complete the request. Novelist needs to go to DBs where your project has, has instances to give you a result. Because we are not in cells v2 duplicating this information, so that's why Nova needs to go to these cells DBs. Uh, and of course, if one of these DBs is down, Nova cannot give you an answer because it doesn't know how many instances, which instances are running in that cell. Uh, so we, it will fail. Um, the problem is if you have a lot of uh, cells, it's almost certain that some DBs will be down, something will happen eventually. Uh, considering the cells v2 architecture, so there is no perfect solution to handle this issue. Uh, actually, Nova team recommends that you have a full toler tolerance solution for your databases, uh, which is reasonable. Um, in our case, it is not very feasible considering the number of MySQL instances that we have. Currently, we are running 73 cells. If we need to manage clusters or even a replication of each database, uh, it's, um, oh, it's an operational overhead. So we are trying to, with few compromises, um, get Nova not to fail when a DB is down. So there is this spec. Uh, how to handle a uh, cell down. Uh, everything is described there. Uh, please go through the spec. But basically, the main idea is if a DB goes down, Nova, if you do a Nova list, Nova gives, should give you, if it doesn't have all the information, at least should give you the minimal information or some information about your instances, everything that it knows. And actually, Nova knows some things that are stored in the top in the Nova API database, like the UID. Or, and for most of people, at least for us, that is uh, a good enough solution or a good enough compromise. Um, another thing is shadowing. Um, so we came from the cells v1 world. So doing that, cells v1 has not only one scheduling level, but two scheduling levels. So first, in cells v1, uh, if you are trying to put a new instance, the first scheduler will select the best cell for your request based on the filters that you defined or the mapping that you have. And then the local scheduler in the cell will select the best node based on the filters that you enable. This concept doesn't exist anymore in Nova, this two-level scheduler. So now it's, everything is global using placement meaning that things that we are used to, like having special configuration for the schedulers in particular cells, those things are not possible at this point in cells v2. For example, um, the PCI pass-through three filter that in the past was only enabled in one cell because it's the cell where, where we have GPUs, now needs to be enabled in the, all the schedulers globally. 
just because we have few nodes with GPUs. And uh, of course, this has some overhead uh, in the scheduling time of all the instances. Um, I, we are discussing this with Nova team how to improve all, uh, this thing, for example. Other was we do this mapping between cells and projects. And uh, placement initially and uh, Nova scheduler, was, they were not aware of this. So actually this was very uh, hard to achieve with cells v2. But for Rocky, Nova team implemented this feature, the request filter, that allows to do this mapping using aggregates and placement aggregates uh, for not only for projects, but also for availability zones. Of course, this work was done in Rocky. Of course, we backport everything to Queens and we start using it right away. Um, and actually works uh, very well. So it's pretty good. And what it actually allows us is to filter the number of requests from placement. So previously, if we are trying to boot an instance in our, in our clouds, the scheduler will ask placement for allocation candidates and we will get a bunch of uh, nodes. The default is 1,000, um, which is a lot then for the scheduler to go through. With this filtering, basically, we, placement now is only uh, giving the nodes for that particular cell, because the mapping, or for that particular availability zone that the user requested. However, in our case, if a user tries to create an instance in availability zone A, for example, placement can uh, send up to 800 compute nodes or allocation candidates for that VM, um, which is still a lot for the scheduler to cycle through. Um, there is this feature or this configuration option, the max placement results, uh, that we set to a very low uh, number. Actually, it's 10, what we have. And this improved a lot the scheduler performance because then placement only gives 10, 10 results. Uh, however, uh, it built some issues. Um, for example, if you try to lie migrate an instance with a definite target, this request needs to go through the scheduler and then scheduler will ask placement. Um, and if that node that you defined is not in the set of the of, of nodes that the placement gives, in this case, in our, in our case 10, uh, the request will fail. Um, this is already fixed in Stein, I think. I think it will be, it's backporting to, to Rocky. Um, it, it was the same for rebuild. And other minor things, um, if you're running a cloud for a long, long time, we, and running the archival instances, you, may, you will have these orphan request specs and instance mappings that there is nothing at Nova now that, is a, that removes it. So in our case, we had thousands and thousands of entries in the database with this. So we need to f find out a good solution to delete all of this. Slow availability zones, uh, if you have Availability zone list goes through all aggregates and through all the services. And if you have huge aggregates, uh, this could take a lot of time. And that is particularly noticeable in Horizon because then the Dropbox to select the availability zone is not available. So users complain. Um, scheduling time, we notice this because we run cells v1. It's in our case higher in, than in cells v2 than in cells v1. Uh, we are, in, we need to make an effort to look deeper into this. We are trying to help. Um, and don't expect always a consistent state from a database that is five years old, especially the running cells v1. Uh, we notice this, for example, in this simple, simple operation, delete and aggregate those that fails because Nova is not able to find the service in the cell database. And yeah, that's not consistent, but... But Nova should not be, shouldn't block in these kind of operations. Um, as you can see, these were, well, few issues, but they are already fixed in Rocky. Um, most of them backported to Queens. Thanks to very good communication and I think collaboration. Was, which is awesome. I think it was very good. Yeah. So we are continuing this trend to upgrade very fast Nova to the latest release. 
So two weeks ago, we just upgraded to Nova to Rocky. So I, even if this is not really related with Cells v2, it's, it is a little bit because it's our first upgrade using Cells v2, uh, I wanted to tell, uh, tell you our experience on this. So in the past, upgrading Nova with Cells v1 required months of work, planning, making sure that all our internal patch will work with the new release. Uh, it was a heavy operation. Uh, the upgrade itself could take up to, uh, up to w one entire day with the APIs on time, because at that time uh, we needed to upgrade all the nodes in the entire cloud, because this RPC versioning in Cells v1 was not really, we didn't trust it. Sometimes it was working for some operations, but most of them will fail. So we needed to upgrade everything. It was a very heavy operation. This time with Cells v2, we did upgrade to Rocky with only one hour of API downtime. And because we were conservative, we really wanted to do this. Never, it was our first time upgrading with Cells v2, so we want to do it slowly. Um, we upgraded the control plane, and then we let the compute nodes upgrade themselves during the next 24 hours. So what is our control plane? Uh, it's VMs running in the infrastructure itself. So each VM has four virtual CPUs, eight gigs of RAM, nothing special. For the APIs, we have 16 VMs only running Nova API, then 10 VMs running Nova Conductor plus Nova Shadler, and another 10 VMs running Nova Placement API. And keep in mind this number because for the next slide this is important. So 10 Nova Placement APIs for the entire infrastructure. Uh, and then we have 73 cell controllers. Uh, when we upgraded to Queens and migrated to cells V2, we had 70. Actually, during these six months, we actually had more three cells, around 600 new nodes into the infrastructure. Um, so all of this was upgraded during this one hour downtime. Of course, we did the DB sync the day before, worked great and we set the upgrade levels to compute to auto. So everything was working fine. We set the compute nodes to upgrade during the next 24 hours in our, in our automated system. And uh, this is not related with cells v2 at all. This is a scaling issue, um, but it's very interesting. So the compute nodes start to upgrade to the rocket release, and in your left, what you can see is the number of placement requests uh, before the upgrade, so before 8 a.m., and then after when the compute nodes start to, uh, to upgrade. And that was the normal load for us in Queens, uh, less than or 1.5 million requests. Um, and then when the compute nodes start to upgrade to Rocky, you see the, the number of requests to placement to increase a lot. In this one, what you see is the time that each request takes in placement. So compute nodes start to upgrade, and you see that the request time, of course, goes up. I could, uh, uh, we also have uh, graphs about the CPU load of the nodes. It goes to 100%. These were these two no uh, 10 nodes that I mentioned in the Nova placement API. And you can guess when we add more capacity to placement infrastructure, right, because then the request time goes, goes down. This was around 8 a.m. in the next day when we arrived to the office. Um, and then the requests continued to grow because it was not finished, the upgrade in all the compute nodes. So basically now we are running, instead of 10, 30 placement nodes to observe all these loads. And we have been discussing this with Nova team, placement team, uh, to see if we can improve this. Um, Placement now, the, it's very shatty. Of course, during that period, we had an impact in the VM scheduling um, because placement was very slow. Um, another issue that we hit with the upgrade with Rocky to Rocky that is not Cells v2 related, it, it was Nova Compute that we have with Ironic Driver enabled uh, because all these new placement um, requests 
takes a lot of time to go to do the full cycle through all the instances that this Nova Compute is managing. So in our case, we have one Nova Compute for more than 1,000 bare metal instances, and this takes a lot of time. So Nova reports these services as, as, as not available. Um, and basically, af after we look into these issues, um, Nova now is working fine. So I think the main message of this presentation, or at least of my part, is that CERN Cloud is running Nova Rocky with Cells V2, which is pretty awesome. Uh, of course, we found some issues in Queens. This was expected. Most of them are already fixed with all the collaboration with the Nova team. Thanks a lot. Uh, cells V2 works at scale. We have 70, 73 cells, more than 9,000 nodes. It works fine at that scale. Of course, there are improvements in performance, and we are being working on them. No more code and craft for us, like in Cells V1, to have basic functionality. Everything is there. And much easier upgrade. So thanks all, Nova team, for, mm. for this. Thank you. So I think we have some questions. Sure. Hey. I can't get over the mic, so I'll just speak loud. Um, so is the lesson learned on those uh, going from 10 nodes to 30 nodes that uh, if you'd known that in advance or other operators could make that change before doing the upgrade, would that have worked? Yes, it will, it will overwork. So basically, that is the idea that I'm saying this year, OK? Uh, the number of the placement requests increases a lot, so be prepared for that. Oh, it depends on the size of your cloud. If you have a small cloud, you will not notice, right? But any more questions, please? Uh, you, you need to speak to the mic, uh, otherwise I cannot hear. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. And my question was, how do you address uh, the networking aspects, port creation, deletion, when you use cells? Do you also do right. split out the networking side? So the cell concept is only a Nova concept. Neutron is not aware of cells at all. So for us, Neutron, uh, it's a global service. So it will be great if you could split, new, split the load in Neutron per cell, but at this point, it's not possible. So port creation and deletion is not cell aware at all. Is there another question? Maybe not. Okay. So okay. Thank you all. Hi.